Nityanandam. With all auspicious blessings and grace of my Guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda Swamiji, I welcome you to this series on made for those who do not know Hinduism. And this is a continuation of the last see last video where I spoke about how to identify a real Guru. And I had shared out of three ways I found I could identify a real Guru, I had shared one and I had two more to share. So right now I will share two more in English. The first one is of course the feeling connection which I described in my pre previous video. The second one that I have found even in the ancient sacred texts, the Upanishads and the Vedas, the one way they say when you are in front of a real Guru, the conflicting thoughts, the speed of thoughts per second just falls drastically and you reach the space of mind which you always wanted, feeling calm, in control and in love with life. The moment you see your Guru, the thoughts just drop drastically and you will see that most of your questions are answered without you even verbalizing and the rest of the questions you will realize after you understood all the answers given to you that they are redundant. When you come across such a guru in your life, the one thing you should never do is leave him. Catch him and catch him in such a way that you never leave him. Of course, first you have to catch him. You have to find a real guru, identify that he is a real guru, which is really difficult in today's world since we are already so corrupted with our thoughts, so corrupted with our, by our own opinions and by our own judgments. Even if you have experienced a feeling connection and experienced this, the drastic reduction of thoughts in front of my guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda Swamiji, the moment you move away from him, your mind starts telling you or people around you start questioning your belief in your faith. At that time, going back to that feeling connection, going back to how you experienced being in front of my Guru, holding on to that experience is the only way you can hold on to the Guru in your life. Otherwise, of course, you can meet a number of lovely fake Gurus, fake Babas, fake sadhus which are maybe quite a few in the society but finding an authentic guru especially an avatar who has come here to fulfill the purpose of a guru because only guru can give an enlightenment sorry give enlightenment not an enlightenment give enlightenment to people the third way you can really identify connect to a real guru or a true guru as we perceive them to be is knowing if a guru is, is committed to giving enlightenment to a human being irrespective of his gender, irrespective of his caste, irrespective of his creed, irrespective of his geographical and demographical positioning. When you come across such a guru, you and you will understand that you have for the first time in your life met a being who is truly and only concerned about your welfare. There are many maths, many organizations, many gurus who either are secular or who are specific to a caste and creed. but. They are not integrated to the teachings of the Vedas and the Upanishads and Lord Sadashiva himself when he says that enlightenment is for every human being beyond gender, caste, creed, geographical and demographical frameworks. Sadashiva has clearly stated this. When Shiva himself has stated this, all other organizations, muds, gurus and anybody else who bring in various reasons and various sects saying that sects, S-E-C-T-S, sects, saying that only this sect deserves enlightenment and this sect does not deserve this. That is non-integrity to Lord Sadashiva's philosophy, to his 
principal and to Shiva himself. Because Shiva clearly says in the Agamas, even animals deserve enlightenment and they can get enlightened. When Shiva is so magnanimous in giving and empowering people with the signs of enlightenment, nobody has any business in trying to bring in sects, SECTS sects or any other reason for not giving the signs to each and every one of us. Years and decades ago, when Kabir was alive, Sant Kabir Das I'm talking about, when Sant Kabir Das was alive, he was a humble weaver who lived in a small hut, married to a lovely wife called Loy. He always lived like that. Either he was traveling across the length and breadth of Akhand Bharat those days, just singing and losing himself in the praise of the Lord. Or at home with his humble, pretty wife in his humble surroundings. Meanwhile, in Persia, uh, a king, a Persian king was so highly spiritual. He was constantly seeking the purpose of his life and the purpose of human life as such. And one day when he was sleeping in his room, uh, in his room on the bed, for about two to three inches, the uh, the mattress is layered with flowers so the king sleeps on this every night king Abraham his name was every night he would sleep on this but in the morning when he wakes up his mind will be constantly seeking seeking and he has met in his life so many masters gurus and whomever he thought could help him move closer to the purpose of life but Though years of searching, he still hadn't found anybody. One day, when he was sleeping in his room, on the mattress layered with two inches of flowers, he heard a sound on top of his roof. So he calls his guards and he, they find two people walking on top of the roof. They bring them down to the king and the king asks them, um, What are you doing in the middle of the night on top of my roof? So these two guys they say, your majesty, we are not thieves. We are looking for a camel that is lost. Really? Camel that is lost? Are you crazy? Will you find it on top of my roof that in the middle of the night? Don't you think if there is a camel ever can get on a roof, you can see it from like miles away? The king asks them. The two, two men just smile at him and say, why not when you can sleep on a bed of flowers every night and claim that you're seeking for enlightenment, seeking for God, why can't I seek for my camel on top of your roof? That is when King Abraham feels shaken inside and he understands his hypocrisy, his, which is why he has never found enlightenment till date. Even though he kept looking, kept looking for it, he never found it because there was complete lack of integrity and authenticity in the way he seeked his higher consciousness. That very day, he hands over his kingdom to his prime minister and he goes, he starts walking. He walks the length and breadth of many, many countries and finally reaches India. In India, he hears about Kabir, the weaver saint, the humble saint. Who can give enlightenment to anybody? So he searches for Kabir. He finally reaches a small hut and he narrates his whole experience to Kabir. And Kabir Das tells him, No, no, see, you're a king. You are used to the luxuries of life. I'm a humble weaver. In my house, I don't even have a basic facilities. I just have basic necessities. I don't have basic facilities. You cannot live here. And for a disciple has to live around a guru to understand and know what seeking is, then maybe I can give you initiation. First, you have to be able to live in my place. So I cannot accept you as my disciple and initiating you is not possible for me because we come from two different categories of life, dynamically opposite. One who's ultra, super, uber rich, one who's poor, poor by choice though. Poor, socially and financially poor, but by choice. So the king keeps requesting him. And Kabir 
is very firm that he cannot accommodate a king in his weaver's hut. Seeing this, this going on for quite some time, Kabir's wife, Loy, she comes to Kabir and asks him the question. No, the king is requesting you so much. Just consider him for some time. You should accept him as a disciple. And then, you know, you can decide what you want to do. First, you accept him as a disciple. See how he's able to accommodate. Maybe change. And then if you're satisfied, you give him initiation. Only then he becomes a disciple. So Kabir, because his wife has intervened, he says, okay, let's see. You start staying here for 12 years, then we will see. So the king serves the weaver. He helps him clean, helps him cook, travels with him, takes care of the housework. Whatever he can do, he is required to do. The king keeps doing. Seeing this, few years later, Kabir's wife, recommends to Kabir. See, this man has been here for so many, many years now. Can you not initiate him and take him as a disciple? Kabir just looks at her and he says, Okay, I'll do one thing. Mm, you go on top of the opposite house hut. That's like um, a hut kind of a place which has the opposite house is a hut with a kind of a terrace on top. Go there and from top of that terrace, you pour a big can of garbage on this King Ibrahim. Come back and tell me how he responds. So she goes, she stands, waits for Loy to walk, uh, waits for King Ibrahim to walk down, and Kabi's wife Loy dumps the whole bag of garbage on his head. King Ibrahim just looks up. He doesn't see Loy, he only sees that the garbage has fallen on him and he talks to himself. If I was in Egypt, this would not have happened. Sorry, if I was still in Persia, this would not have happened to me. And he walks into Kabir's house. Now Kabir's wife comes and reports this to Kabir. And Kabir tells her, see, he still thinks he's a king. Inside of his space, he has not become a seeker, he has not become a disciple. The moment his seeking is intense, his response would have been different. So for now, don't come back to me again. Like this, a few more years pass. The king continues to serve him without asking any question, nothing. He'll be the most obedient disciple. Yet, something in Kabir does not move him to initiate this king Abraham. Almost 12 to 15 years pass hence. Then one day Kabir calls his wife Loy and tells her, Do the same test that you did few years ago. Go on to a higher space and from there dump the, gara the garbage on Ibrahim and then come back and tell me what his response is. So again Loy carries a lot of garbage in her hand. She goes up and she waits for King Abraham to pass down. The moment he's passing, she dumps the garbage on him. And this time, Abraham says, Thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for throwing this garbage on me. Because this will purify my soul and intensify my seeking to know who I am, to know who you are. So Loy comes back and reports this to Kabir. And Kabir says, now do you understand? This is the space of a seeker. Whereas few years ago, when you were intensely recommending him to be initiated by me, he was still in the space of king. He had not yet authentically moved to the space of a seeker. Then he calls Abraham, accepts him as a disciple and initiates him. This is a mark of a true guru. Irrespective of who you are, Keeping your commitment and authentically working, stretching, working, working, training you towards enlightenment, for your enlightenment is a true guru. Irrespective, you can be a king, you can be a pauper, you can be a white, you can be black, you can be a man, woman, transgender, anybody. The physical body or the social structure does not limit a guru.
which is what I have seen, which is how I am even able to relate to these stories because I have seen Swamiji. The moment he commits to someone, it can be anybody, irrespective of anything. He can be a rich man, a poor man, he can be nobody. But the moment he gets initiated by Swamiji or he has asked Swamiji guidance and seeking, I have seen Swamiji at whatever time without even compromising a single moment he compromises his time his basic comforts and stretches himself for the others enlightenment because Swamiji once told me and I still remember it that once a guru commits to your enlightenment not only in this birth even if you miss him in this birth till you get enlightenment how many ever births you take it is the responsibility of the Guru to make sure you get enlightened. <coughs> Till then, even if the Guru leaves the body, he will be very easily accessible because he has committed to so many people. Human beings, their minds are worse than monikers and the monkeys. Because one moment they are like, Oh Swamiji, you are everything. The next moment, the moment he tries to even align them to their higher consciousness, even tries to show the reflection, saying, no, no, you are not so bad. You are a better person. Right now, you are responding and working from the space of fear. Fear is a powerlessness. You cannot effort to entertain it. Even if he says that, people start withdrawing. Just because they withdraw, Swamiji has never withdrawn. He will find some other way. To educate the same person. He has never given up on anyone till date unless they have given up on Swamiji. That is why for me Swamiji is the most compassionate. Not only for me, I think for all Swamiji's disciples and devotees who have known him. He is the most compassionate and I feel sorry for those who have not met him at all. Just meet him once. Get his Diksha once and you will see life as is. You will see, you will experience the real you, your highest consciousness which each of you will want to live. It is not that you don't want to, you just do not know how to do it. And only Swamiji can help you all find it because he is so relentless. It is nice that we meet someone who is relentless for our own sake versus his own sake. For you to understand even what I am saying, you need to live around Swamiji. You need to become an Adinavasi. For you to even taste, like in the Biskaraj they say, the real goodness. Taste the real goodness. Taste the avatar by living around the avatar. If you want to become an Adinavasi and be part of this exciting new Sangha, the exciting new culture, which Swamiji is trending across the world. Do call us or leave your contact number in the comment section below and we will get back to you. If you have any questions, clarifications, queries regarding the Nityananda Sangha or me or you want to know more about my Guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda Swamiji, please leave your comments below and I will answer them in my next question, in my next videos. Thank you for watching. Nitya Nandam.